Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So glad to have you guys here today. As you guys see from the title, today we have part two of my Middle Eastern fragrance review. I gave you guys part one a couple weeks ago. I told you guys, you know, I didn't want part one to be too long, so I broke it up into two parts. So here we have part two, like I said. Before we get into today's video, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and also turn on your post notifications so you never miss whenever I do drop another video. So jumping right into the video, we have a Kismet for Women by Mesa Alhambra. I told you guys in my last video that I got all my fragrance samples from a website called Anabis. So in today's video, all my fragrances are going to be samples except for one. But yeah, this is Kismet for Women by Mesa Alhambra. And as you can see, this is supposed to be a dupe of Good Girl Gone Bad by Killian. And honestly, one thing about Mesa Alhambra, they are going to dupe a fragrance. Like, they are going to copy the bottle the fragrance, the longevity, the projection, the sillage, and sometimes they even outdo the doer. And I really think that that's why they're getting sued by Tom Ford, but yeah, this fragrance is so, so good. Now, when I first smelled this fragrance, I thought it was like a peachy fragrance. I thought it was like a peachy floral fragrance. It wasn't until I looked up the notes that I actually saw that it had apricot in there. So some of the notes include apricot, rose, tuberose, amber, cedar. This was my first time smelling a fragrance with apricot or at least apricot as like a top note. So I didn't really recognize it. I don't eat apricots in real life, but yes, y'all, this is such a nice fruit. I don't even want to say fruity because the only fruit in here that I do smell is apricot. I mean, that is the only fruit in here. If this is really an apricot, tuberose, and rose fragrance. Whew, this smells so good. Like, ugh, I just love blind buying fragrances. In this case, it was a sample and not the full bottle. But yeah, I love blind buying fragrances and them smelling good. Like, I really need to go buy a full. I don't need to buy a full bottle of this, because as I can see. But I need a full bottle of this. This just smells so, so, so good to me. This is a nice juicy apricot, but the rose, the tuberose, and the amber, they kind of keep it from becoming too much of a fruity fragrance and it brings it over to the floral side. This is a white floral lover's dream. If you know you like white florals, I definitely, definitely would check this out. <clears throat> The kind of person that I would think would wear this fragrance would be someone who's is in their mid 20s to mid 40s. I can definitely see this being someone's signature scent. Ugh, I cannot trust this enough. This is so good. I would probably wear this fragrance if I was going to church or if I was going to brunch or just somewhere where I wanted to be sophisticated. This is a grown woman's scent. It just, listen. This is so good. Now in terms of longevity and sillage, this fragrance, I haven't worn it because like I showed you guys, it's kind of hard for me to like wear these fragrances because I have to like wipe them on and I don't know. I think it would be easier for me to just spray them. But just from what I, and even the tube is almost done. Just from me rubbing this on my hand, this fragrance has last all day. Even when I open like the drawer that I have the fragrances in, this one stands out all the time. So I just already know that this is going to be a compliment getter. This is going to be real long lasting. Just from how it smells, I can definitely see myself getting a minimum of like five to six hours of this and having to respray it. I can also see people asking me, what is it that I have on? Because my scent trail is just so good. I don't think it's going to be like beast, beast mode. I think I may have to overspray to get that effect. But yes, yes. If you like white florals, if you like apricot fragrances, I definitely would check this out. If you have Good Girl Gone Bad, like I always say, if you have a specific fragrance but because it's so expensive and you spent your hard-earned money on it but you want to wear it like every day get this fragrance I'm pretty sure this would be like a great great substitute definitely check this out so next up we have Kismet Angel by Mesa Alhambra and we also have Kara by Latafa I did a whole video on this fragrance it's on my channel so definitely go check that out now I'm going to be talking about these fragrances together because they are supposed to be a dupe of Angel Share by Killian now before I start rambling let's just get into the notes of both of these fragrances so the notes on Kismet Angel are listed as honey tonka bean the dark chocolate cinnamon vanilla amber and some of the notes in camera are listed as a cinnamon a nutmeg a date praline vanilla tonka bean etc 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 now while these fragrances are extremely extremely similar there are some major differences that i do want to talk about so first when it comes to kismet angel when you first i can't even say spray it because i have to like wipe it i wiped it on here before i started this video but upon first sniff this smells like a nice woody dark chocolate boozy cinnamony fragrance that's like a whole mouthful but that's what it smells like it smells woody then there's some dark chocolate in there there's some sweetness and that's the dark chocolate then there's some spiciness to it which is the cinnamon yeah that's what this smells like upon first sniff whereas camera on the other hand is a lot sweeter upon first sniff 
I smell the amber, the praline, maybe it's some of the dates, the vanilla. It is just such a nice, sweet, the cinnamon, it is very, very cinnamon heavy. In terms of the opening, I do prefer Kamra's opening a little bit more. It's just a little bit more inviting. It's more on the feminine side. It's just really sweet. I mean, they both smell really good, but in my opinion, Kamra really has it for the opening. Now, where these fragrances really differ is a dry down. And when I say differ, I mean that they are, they can still be cousins, but they're not identical. They're probably about 85% the same. Now, Kiss My Angel is said to be the exact dupe of Angel Share by Killian. On the dry down of this fragrance, I still smell everything that I smelled in the opening, but the cognac, the woody notes, the spiciness, everything in this fragrance is really intensified. And there's something about this fragrance that I really can't put my finger on, but it really has a spicy note to it and it's not cinnamon. It kind of smells like if there was like a cinnamon pepper. It's really spicy, really woody. It smells so good. In terms of sweetness, it is a sweet fragrance, but like I said, it is boozy, it is woody. So it kind of balances out the sweetness so it's not really overbearing. This is the unisex fragrance of the two of these fragrances. This one leans, like I said, it's more woody. It's more, not necessarily masculine, but men can definitely, definitely get away with wearing this. So if you are a man and you were considering wearing angel shit, I definitely would check this one out. When it comes to longevity and see I can definitely see this lasting for a minimum of like six five to six hours before you have to respray it definitely not a beast mode fragrance i think you would really have to overspray, but you can definitely achieve that beast mode status but yes from what they said the girls are saying that if you like angel share this is a 100 percent 99 95 i'm gonna just say 95 because i feel like everyone's nose is different but a 95 percent dupe of angel share so again if you have angel share and you save it for special occasions i definitely would pick up kiss my angel by mesa Alhambra. now take everything i just said about kiss my angel and make it sweeter and you have camera camera is such a nice sophisticated scent this when it starts off it is just so nice so sweet oh it's the dates, it's the praline. For some reason, amber is not listed as a note in here, but this is really, really amber heavy. In my initial review of this, I described this as, think about if you're baking an apple pie, you add some cinnamon, you add some cognac in here. This is it, it is really sweet, but as with Kiss My Angel, it's not like sweet tooth sweet, but it's still really on the sweet and the feminine side. The cognac and the cinnamon is kind of working to balance out the sweetness, but listen. This is just so good. The longevity and the sillage of this is gonna be identical to Kismet Angel. In my opinion, they're both not gonna be beast mode. You just have to over spray. In terms of sillage, maybe like two feet, you may leave like a slight scent trail, but I don't think you're gonna choke anybody out with this fragrance, so keep that in mind. Funny enough, all the reviews that I've seen of these two fragrances, well, Angel Share and this fragrance, a lot of people, they do prefer this fragrance over Angel Share, but honestly, which of the two fragrances you get is, is gonna depend on you. If you're a woman or you just like to smell a little bit more feminine, a little bit more sophisticated, more sweet, because this fragrance, as it goes on in the day, it gets sweeter and sweeter on your skin once it mixes with your body chemistry. So if that's something that you like, then I would definitely check this out. If you want something a little bit more woody, more spicy, a little bit more towards the masculine leaning side, I definitely would check out is my angel by Mesa Alhambra and as I said earlier although they are similar fragrances they are still different but I don't think that they're different enough for you to have both of them especially if you're someone who's just starting off your collection these fragrances are probably going to smell identical to you but if you are someone who is a little bit more versed in the fragrance community you're going to be able to tell the difference between these two me personally the only way I'm going to pick up Kismet Angel is if I see it on like sale. Granted, it's a really affordable fragrance, but if I see it for like $20, $15, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to pick it up because I'm just going to lay them together. But yes, like I said earlier, if you have Angel Shea and you save it for a special occasion, I definitely would check this out so you can wear this as like an everyday scent. Or if you have Angel Shea, but you just wish it was a little bit sweeter, a little bit less spicy, I would check out Kamra by Latafa. Really both great fragrances. So next up we have Tana Souk by Al Haramein and this is a fragrance oil. What really drew me to this fragrance oil was the bottle. The bottle of this fragrance oil is just so beautiful. I was really intrigued to see what this smells like. I don't even think I even read the notes or even read the reviews before I even ordered the sample. I just got it. So let's get into some of the notes. Some of the notes in this fragrance are rose, saffron, woody notes, amber, brown sugar. Now, 
despite what I just read, just forget about it. The only thing I smell in here is rose and vanilla. This is a fragrance that has been done and it's been done so many times over. I don't know if I said it, but it is a fragrance oil. This fragrance smells like Jennifer Rudy Gold, smells like Rose's Venise, smells like Intense Cafe, smells like Rose's Musk. You get the point. This fragrance has been done and been done and been done and been done over and over and over again. Now, if you've ever smelled any of those fragrances, then you know exactly what this smells like. That combination of rose and vanilla. I don't, like, it's a very popular, com it's, a, it's a very popular combination, but I just think that it's becoming a bit overdone because there's no reason why I can name five fragrances that smell exactly like this. It's definitely not a bad scent, but it's kind of like Baccarat Rouge where it's like, okay, you can only do it so many times before it's like, we're tired of it. Now, if you have any of the fragrances that I just named, the only reason why I would justify getting this fragrance oil for myself is because it is a fragrance oil and as you guys know fragrance oil it tends to cling to your body more than a regular fragrance so if you have Jenna Food to go or you have Roses Vigny and you're just looking for something to pair with it I definitely would check out this oil super super affordable very long lasting at least on my skin in terms of longevity and sillage it is a fragrance oil so in terms of sillage I would say someone that's like in your scent bubble maybe if you like mix it with your lotion and stuff people are gonna like you're gonna leave a big trail but if you just put it on your pulse points really and truly you shouldn't be putting that much that people are gonna stop you to ask you what you have on in terms of longevity i probably get about four to five hours so it's not bad it's definitely not beast mode i may have to go in and touch it up throughout the day just depending on where i do wear this to but yes keep that in mind if you do get this fragrance oil and you're thinking about and you're thinking that you're gonna get something brand new this is something like i said it's been done and it's been done a thousand times before so keep that in mind but if you are someone who doesn't really own any rose and vanilla fragrances i definitely will check this out because like i said it is such a really really good scent it's gonna smell so good in the cooler and the colder months and it's a great addition to your collection it's gonna be great for layering so yeah i definitely would pick up ton of soup Next up, we have Chocolate Musk by Al Newham. Now, I can't remember if I ordered this fragrance on my own because when I did order my fragrances, they did put like three or four gifts in there, sample gifts for me to try. So I can't remember if I ordered this or if they just gave this to me, but this is a concentrated perfume oil. Now, I'm not sure if this is a new fragrance oil. This is a new fragrance brand, but I could not find the notes for this anywhere. So I'm just gonna tell you guys what I think it smells like. So first of all, if you've ever smelled this fragrance right here, Choco Musk, you know exactly what chocolate must smells like. They are the same exact fragrance. This smells like, it smells like cocoa butter, shea butter, Nesquik chocolate powder. It's still a really, really good scent, but yeah, they just smell exactly alike. So if you have this, and for some reason it doesn't last on you, because I know a lot of people said that this doesn't last on them. On my clothes and on my skin, this lasts, I wanna say a good, three to four hours if I do over spray it can stay on my clothes for a good while so yes if this is your favorite scent I definitely would pick up chocolate musk and just layer it because it is a fragrance oil so it is gonna last longer it's gonna cling to you especially when your skin is moisturized it's not gonna be beast mode at all this is a fragrance oil that you're definitely gonna have to reapply throughout the day but yes because even with the fragrance oil of this I know a lot of people were saying that this doesn't last but the fragrance oil of this lasts really long I haven't really gotten around to <clears throat> getting the fragrance oil of this because I'm not not that I don't like this fragrance but I'm not the biggest fan of Choco Musk I never went back to get the fragrance oil but yes if you do like Choco Musk I definitely would check out Chocolate Musk this fragrance oil I'm gonna see if they have it on Amazon if not I would just leave the Anabas link down below so next up we have another fragrance by Latafa this is Latafa Amir Al Oud Intense Oud now, as you can, well, maybe not from the bottle, but this is supposed to be a dupe of, or inspired by, By the Fireplace by Mason Margiela. I reviewed By the Fireplace and other Margiela fragrances on my channel, so definitely go check that video out. Now, when I did review By the Fireplace, I did explain to you guys that I did like the fragrance somewhat. It was just a little bit too on the smoky side for me. I wish it was like a little bit more toned down and less by the fireplace and more like across the street from the fireplace so that was my thoughts on by the fireplace and now when i smell this fragrance i can definitely see where the was going with this one some of the notes in this one include woody notes oud vanilla musk sandalwood now this is exactly what i wanted by the fireplace to smell like on the initial scent when you first spray it when you first rub it 
It smells like a sweet, woody, oody fragrance. I do smell the oud, I smell the vanilla. For some reason, I don't know why, but I really smell some incense in here, even though incense is not listed as a note. I can definitely see the relation to By the Fireplace, but this one, like I wanted By the Fireplace to be, is across the street from the fireplace, below the fireplace. Like, it's not next to the fireplace or directly by the fireplace which i do love just based on the nose y'all can already tell this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea like it is a smoky woody oody fragrance so if you are someone that likes fruity floral fresh gourmand yeah this is on like the other side of the spectrum this is one that i definitely do not do not recommend you blind buying at all definitely get a sample and smell this or if you do buy and buy it make sure you can return it if you do not like it with longevity and sea ash i can see this lasting about four to five hours before you have to respray it in terms of sea ash i don't see this being it's definitely not a beast mode fragrance i think this fragrance would really be great for layering if you have other fragrances like maybe you have a gourmand but you want it to be a little bit more smoky or you have something that's like too sweet and you want to tone it down a little bit with some smokiness with some oud with some woodiness i would pick this up yeah, this is a, a unisex fragrance, so anyone can wear this, but yeah, if you like By the Fireplace, but like me, you just thought it was too smoky, too woody, I definitely would check out Intense Oud by Latafa. So next up, we're going to talk about Latafa's Opulent Musk and also Latafa Ana Abia Rouge. They are similar fragrances and they both are supposed to be duping. Ooh. They both are supposed to be duping Baccarat Rouge. Wait, let me just make sure that they're both supposed to be duping Baccarat Rouge and not the x -ray. So yes, they are both duping Baccarat Rouge and not the x -ray. Now, like I told you guys before, I've never smelled Baccarat personally, but honestly, I've smelled so many fragrances that are inspired by, look at me trying to do this, inspired by Baccarat that, honestly, at this point, I just feel like I've smelled Baccarat. So yes, let's just get into the notes. So the first one is gonna be Opulent Musk, and the notes in this fragrance include white musk, saffron, lemon, white flowers, jasmine, cedar, amber, and for the notes in Ana Abia Rouge, we have kumquat, bergamot, caramel, musk, oak musk, now. Now, while these fragrances are really, really similar in the opening, the dry down is really where I can differentiate the two. So when you first smell them, they smell like, they literally smell like saffron, they smell like caramel, which is so funny that saffron is not listed as a note in this fragrance and caramel is not listed as a note in this fragrance, but essentially they smell like saffron they smell like caramel they do smell like some floral notes that i can't really put my finger on maybe it is a jasmine maybe it's the white flower but on the dry down that is where these two fragrances really tend to go in different directions so this one first this is opulent musk when this dries down this is more of a woody ambery saffron fragrance a lot of people describe baccarat as having like a a dentist office smell to it my dentist office personally doesn't smell like this but what this does smell like on the dry down it smells like hot cassette tapes, hot VCR tapes. You know the VCR tapes that are like stuck in our attic somewhere or like in our basement because we haven't used them in a hundred years. I can kind of correlate that smell to this. It's definitely not a bad scent, but I think because I'm able to make that correlation, I really don't like this scent. And I think a lot of people feel that way about Baccarat because your dentist's office smells like that fragrance. It's not necessarily a bad fragrance, but because you can make the correlation to your dentist's office, it's like, um, you don't really like it. So that's kind of how I feel about this. I already put the cassette tapes in my mind. So every time I do smell this on a dry down, it just smells like hot cassette tapes. It smells like hot VCR tapes, whereas, and I'll be at Rouge, they kind of have the same smell, except this one. This one is a lot sweeter on the dry down, and it makes sense because I'm looking at the notes and it has a lot of fruity notes in here. So while I do smell a little bit of the cassette tape or the dentist office, the fruity notes are really doing a good job as at keeping it in the background. And as this one does dry down, it gets a lot sweeter on my skin. So I really do like this one a bit more. But yeah, keep that in mind if you want something a little bit more more woody more masculine i would definitely go for um opulent musk but if you want something a little bit more playful a little bit sweeter it still smells like saffron or amber but it's just a little bit sweeter on the top and on the dry down i would definitely check out Op ana abia rouge by latafa now in terms of longevity because i didn't really like this one i didn't really have a chance to wear this one and test it out but i would only assume that because it's latafa it's going to be a good long lasting fragrance as y'all know when it comes to longevity latafa does not play but i can speak about this fragrance so when i did wear this fragrance you know i dabbed it on my hand 
I want to say I probably got about five to six hours of this and then I I think I just forgot about it so I can definitely vouch for this being long lasting up until five hours and then you have to respray it but again it's perfectly fine I want to say a big bottle of this or a full bottle of this is probably like $25 which is not bad in terms of sillage for the first two hours you are going to leave like a little trail but after that it becomes a skin scent so if you are looking for something like beast mode head turning this is going to turn heads for the first two hours and after that you're going to have to reapply it to kind of get that wow factor again but again for $25 $30 like you really you really cannot beat it now because I personally have not smelled Baccarat Rouge or the extra I can't really speak about which one of these two is an exact the dupe to Baccarat all I can tell you is that if you have Baccarat or you smelled it and you smell the extra I would definitely pick up both of these samples and see which one of these you like like I said a lot of people do like opulent must because it is a bit more woody a bit more saffrony and in the same breath a lot of people including myself do like Anabia Rouge more because it is a bit more on the fruity side still woody but it's just a little bit sweeter a little bit more on the toned down side when it comes to the woody notes so yes definitely pick up them both as a sample and see which one works better for you honestly if you are someone who likes Baccarat Rouge you can definitely blind buy one of these fragrances I would just say read the reviews or if you do blind buy it just make sure you can return it if you don't like it but yeah read the reviews see what the comments are saying and then pick one of these two that you think fits you as a person so friends, those are all the fragrances that I have for you today. Like I told you guys in my review of Camera, I'm going to be doing a lot of um, fragrance reviews where I just review individual fragrances. Maybe I'll do some unboxing for you guys just because I think it's kind of unfair to make you guys wait for months and months and months until I'm able to collect eight new fragrances to review for you guys. So I'm going to be doing a lot of individual fragrances, especially the ones that I blind buy, just so you guys can get my initial reactions and my thoughts. So definitely be on the lookout for that. If you want more info, go check out the rest of my Arabian fragrances as well as my other fragrance reviews. I will leave them somewhere up here. If you guys have any questions, comments, and concerns, as always, leave them down below. And if not, I'll see you in my next video.